Hi, welcome back to Boxes Upon Boxes. Now, I almost didn't make this video because it doesn't have anything to do with boxes. I'm not doing any reviews. However, I had a special request to show how I make chili oil. Now, the reason why this makes me uncomfortable is because I didn't make up this recipe. Well, okay, I kind of did, but mostly it was just from watching a bunch of other people on YouTube make chili oil taking a lot of their ideas and adding some of my own, combining them. And ultimately there is no recipe because you just use whatever you have. So uh, first of all, the most important thing is you should find some kind of chili pepper clothing, like this shirt here, chili pepper, hot sauce. Once you get that out of the way, next thing you want to do is cover it up because it's going to get messy. <laughs> so I've got my apron here. Um, you're going to need a container to hold the finished product. And also, well, it'll come in handy all along the way. Now, I love chili oil. I use it on a lot of stuff. So when I make it, I make a lot of it. So this is my container. The other two important items you will need are two pans because we are going to pour oil from one pan to the other. So I have these two saucepans here and I'm going to pour the oil initially into the smaller one because I know it'll fit into the bigger one later. Oh, I almost, well, I almost forgot to get the uh, colander out. Just make sure it fits in the pan. All right. So let's get started. Uh, <laughs> ridicule my knife skills if you want. They're not good. I'm not a professional. I'm a home cook, so I do what I can. Uh, first of all, I, I'm just going to measure out my, I'm using peanut oil. You can use avocado oil. Um, any high temperature oil will be fine. I'm just, I'm not measuring. I have, I have no idea how much this is. Um, I'm going to say four cups, maybe. I don't know. doesn't matter. It's going to be fantastic, no matter what you do. Uh, secondly, I'm going to do my prep. I will start with... I think I'm going to get another bowl first. I'm going to start with my green onions. Now you can cut these whatever size you want. Uh, I'm going to use the white parts and the green parts. They're going to get cooked. It's going to be fantastic. doesn't really matter what you do. And I have seen these cut into larger sections. I like them cut small. I'm, I, basically, if, uh, if you like a chunky chili oil, and I do to some degree, I, I like it somewhat chunky, but um, I also like, like a fairly even distribution of, uh, of my larger pieces throughout every bite. So I like smaller slices of the uh, fresh ingredients. Uh, I have four green onions here. You can use more, you can use fewer. It's all up to you. You don't even have to use green onions at all if you don't want to. There's, there, are, there are no rules, very few rules. It's, it's chili oil. As long as you have chili and oil, that's, the rest is up to you. And these, of course, will shrink a little bit when you add hot oil to them. The idea is we're going to fry up some of the ingredients and just pour hot oil over, uh, the, over the dry ingredients and 
some of the fresh ingredients like these green onions. They, they wouldn't withstand deep frying that, that well, I, I think. So these go into the bowl for later. I could probably go ahead and stick them in the jar right now, but I'm already committed to this course, so that's what we'll do. In my house, I am, my wife will, she likes some spicy things, <laughs> but more often than not, she'll cover it up with ranch dressing or something just to cool it down a bit. Uh, my daughter, she doesn't like spicy stuff at all. So this is pretty much all for me. All right, uh, next I will do the shallots. I'm going to get another bowl. I thought about getting more bowls out, but I didn't. So here we are. So there's my prepped green onion. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and do the shallots next. These are pretty large shallots. Uh, again, you don't have to use shallots. You can use regular onion if you want. Um, you know, you can use more shallots, fewer shallots. It's really seriously, this stuff is just whatever you want want to put in, whatever you have on hand. It's all up to you. The what got me started on chili oil because I've heard of chili oil, of course, but I thought I've 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 seen it in the grocery store in decorative bottles where. You see just oil with a, a big old chili in it, or maybe several chilies. And I thought it was kind of like the uh, cucumber water or something like that, where um, it's, it's just there. <laughs> it does affect the flavor, but I thought it was more for ambiance. And uh, th then I actually, the first time I saw it on YouTube, was a channel called That Dude Can Cook. And he's got a, a style all, all of his own. And I was really fascinated with his technique. And I adopted much of what I'm doing today from his recipes. But then I saw, I can, and you know, I'm, I, I'm, I can't even remember the guy's name because there was another one on YouTube that I saw that I really liked what he did, but I forgot what he did, what his name was. And I and I don't even know. I've, this is the third time I've made chili oil, so I don't know um, what came from what, honestly, at this point. Um, so apologies. Although I'm, I'm sure that they'd just be would, hap, would be happy that I'm actually making it and was inspired by them, uh, and I'm sure they were inspired by others. So it's there's very few things in cooking that are new. We all stand on the shoulders of giants. And uh, there's another channel that I watch called Young Man Cooking, and it's, it's not young like Y O U N G. It's Young is his last name. I think he might be Korean. I'm not sure. But I I have made several of his recipes, and they are fantastic. Uh, okay, so I have my shallots here, and I'm going to slice them thin. Oh, and this Nakuri blade, I got this from uh, Milk Street. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Chris Kimball, I think his name is, is his new venture, not that new anymore. He was the founder, I think, of America's Test Kitchen. I used to watch his show quite a bit. And then he left and started his own thing. I don't know if you can see this. This is uh, probably eighth inch thick slices. Um, as long as you get them about the same, I don't think it matters because 
we're going to deep fry these. And the idea is to just make sure they're all cooked at the same speed. So same thickness should be about the same speed. Excuse the sniffing, I'm getting over a cold here or something. But, oh, it could be the onions too, actually, <laughs> or shallots. Um, it's one thing is if you have any sort of respiratory ailments, at least for me, spicy food really clears that up temporarily. So this is, this is not just a delicious food, it's medicine. And I'm sorry if this is running long. And actually, I think this normally takes me about an hour. So I'll understand if you skip ahead or whatever. Maybe I'll edit it down. I don't normally edit my videos because I don't know how. <laughs> but I can't imagine that watching me chop is that interesting um although maybe uh maybe this will be some asmr cooking and you i will lull you to sleep all right so it looks half the shallots are done maybe a little more than half Yeah, the sniffing is not great video. Maybe I will have to edit that. Ooh, got a little crazy knife going there. If you <laughs> I don't know if you can see the sink off camera, but I'm not just throwing things on the floor. I'm throwing them into the uh, garbage disposal over there. One more. I think every time I make this, I increase the size of the batch. Oh, you hear the, the dog letting me know that a dangerous neighbor is approaching. Probably walking their dog. I should move this oil. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've uh, knocked into it, and I don't want to knock it on the floor. Some of the other ingredients I'll be using today are uh, Szechuan peppercorns, some shiitake mushrooms. Uh, let's see, star anise, cinnamon, various kinds of pepper, peanuts. That was my own idea. I'm, I'm sure other people do it too, but that was not that I've seen. Okay, uh, well, sesame seeds, I've got some. Uh, might as well go over the ingredients now I'm thinking about it. That soy sauce, uh, the oil, of course, ground white pepper, some MSG, kosher salt, shiitake mushrooms, Chinese black vinegar, sesame seeds. And like I said, it's whatever you have and whatever you can find. I wasn't sure what I was looking for, but I wanted it uh, somewhat spicy. So this is chili arbol molito. Uh, ground chili arbol. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, looks looks legitimate. Here are my cloves. We're going to toast these along with the cinnamon and star anise. We got some ginger, 
some more dried chilies. I don't even remember what these are, and I took the label off, so um, we'll never know. Some garlic and some habanero. We're going to fry these up. We're going to fry the uh, shallots up, the garlic, and the habanero. Excuse me, I'm going to step over here. And I'm back. So, okay, I think next I will slice up the habanero. Thank you, Indigo. I'm not going to take the seeds out. More the merrier, I say. And I think when it, I'm like, it, you can you can put whatever chilies you want. I, so far, I haven't made any chili oil that is too spicy for me. And I don't think I've ever had anything that I couldn't tolerate outside of just, you know, foods in general, as far as spiciness goes. I'll, go, I'll throw these tops off, throw them down the disposal. Make sure the dog doesn't eat them. And I'm just going to slice these thin as well. These will be deep fried in their own batch. Just so everything cooks. And basically just so I can take it off the oil easily without uh, compromise as far as is everything done or not? If you're doing this, obviously do not touch your eyes. This curry is very, very sharp. I haven't cut myself yet though. Hopefully that will not change today. I might be entertaining. I'm going to peel the ginger before I cut it up. And I don't know if you've ever, I learned on, uh, on YouTube that you can peel ginger with a spoon. It's the easiest way. Well, I don't know if it's the easiest way. The best way to produce uh, the greatest yield. Certainly you can cut off the irregularities, but then you're going to have more waste. Um, it would be faster, but you get all the time in the world, right? Let's see, other cooking shows that I enjoy on YouTube would be uh, Sam the Cooking Guy. I like Guga. I don't know if it's really a cooking show, but I like, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, oh, I can't remember anymore. Shoot. Um, I like Gordon Ramsay. He's got his own style, although I don't know if I've ever tried to emulate one of his recipes. He's, he's just entertaining, you know. I like that show where he was cooking with his family. That's a completely different dynamic than his other shows. Which I guess is <laughs> better for everyone involved. Now these peppers that I'm cutting they will be, well, of course, they will shrink somewhat in the oil, but they will get crispy, and uh, they will be actually quite chunky. So uh, in some ways, you could call this chili crisp, but 
I think that it, the way I make it, it's not, it's, it does have chunks in it, but there's also a lot of oil. So maybe it's not as, maybe it's not a true crisp, but whatever. It's what I like. I think the only difference would be adding more stuff. But less oil. Ooh, I just breathed some of the habanero air. Almost coughed. All right, almost done. Let's see, what will I do next? There's quite a bit of prep. Once you get going, it goes fairly quickly. And the results are very worth it. I can't remember if I mentioned it already, but I put this stuff on everything. Well, a lot of stuff anyway. Uh, most often, if I'm making ramen, I'll use it for that. If I'm, I, it's great on pizza. It's great on uh, meats. All right, so there's my habanero. Oh, I've got to cut my garlic yet. And I got to peel my ginger. So I'll do garlic next. And so I'm kind of on a cutting roll. And we're, we're just cutting everything thin. And as you can tell, I'm not showing off for the camera. This is really how good I am. I tried the shaking the garlic method to get the outer skin off. Never done it before. And it, I had some success with it. Um, I actually did it three different times. And I would take out the garlic that was peeled and then keep going with the garlic that was not. In the end, I had to manually peel some of it anyway, so. You can buy it peeled in the grocery store, but I've never done that. These are fresh from the clove. Which I've heard is best. Oh, Kenji is another one I watch. America's Test Kitchen, of course. They're there. They've been around forever. Back when people used to watch TV. Some of these pieces are small anyway. Got two pieces right here. I'm going to try slicing two at the same time. They're smaller. I don't know if that saves any time. <laughs> this one still has peel on it. Oh, yeah. Some of these are so small. And I th I think the uh, recipe that I got, I based this off of, said use four or five heads of garlic, but really is, you really, I don't think can have enough or too much. I love garlic. 
You know, these pieces are too small. They're all just uh, they're all just peel. We'll do these last two and we'll call it good. Some stubborn skin here. Stuck to my thumb. All right. Last two. Put these back in the bowl. Or it's ramekin actually. We have a ton of ramekins of various sizes. I think these I bought to make creme brulee in the instant pot which is uh who, who did i get that from uh jeffrey something all right just want to wipe off the cutting board get all those peels off uh probably i'm, I'm almost done with it Okay, so the last thing would be the ginger. And I think I'm going to use about half of this chunk. I'm just gonna peel it. I'm just gonna run the spoon across. And the skin just comes right off. Oh, that smells good. I love ginger. It's hard to get this completely perfect. I'm going to have to break it a little bit to get between the crevices here. And I think that's about it. All right, I'm going to rinse this off quick. And then slice this up. Uh, however, I think I'm going to dry off the cutting board because I don't I can't remember if I fly, fry up the ginger or not. And I don't want to throw anything wet into the hot oil. I'm just going to slice this thin. Actually, I think I I will mince this. As much as I like ginger, I don't want a big chunk of it. A woody bit there from a broken stem. All right, so I'm just going to give this a quick mince. Not quite match sticks, but. Yeah, I think I'm going to go a little finer. 
So all, what you want to do Oh, this smells so good. My wife's not much of a ginger fan. I love it. All right, now um, I will see. I do have a base recipe that I wrote up. Oh, I need to break up my shiitakes. I need another bowl. I run out of bowls. As far as how many you need, whatever, I don't know. I'm going to take that many. <laughs> this looks like uh, nine, eight. And I'm just going to break them up. The, you can use... Uh, fresh but then I think you have to to uh, cook them cook the moisture out of them so dried works best these are really they're dry but they're almost uh, spongy I should just use my hands rather than cut them. Try that. Those neighbors. Yeah, this works a lot better. In fact, I. I should have probably put them in the uh, little ninja. In fact, I think I'll do that. Because I, I don't want big chunks of mushroom in my oil. Get the little ninja out. Uh, where is it? Put all the mushroom pieces in here. Now, we got this a long time ago. I don't even know if they still make this, but I love this thing. It comes in a set of three uh, as part of the blender. There is this one. This is the smallest one. And there is the uh, medium-sized one and the regular blender. And I use this all the time for a lot of stuff. Basically, it's a mini food processor. 
And those chunks look about the size I want. As long as I've got this out, I'm going to break up these chilies. The mystery chilies. But I did use these last time and I know it turned out well. So I'm not worried. It was pretty spicy last time, but I think this time it might even be more spicy. Basically, I'm just turning these into flakes. And I'm going to leave the seeds in them as well. Oh, there's a stem. I'll probably take that out. Yeah, I should have looked for stems. <laughs> oh well. Luckily they stayed whole. I think. All right, I will get a ramekin for that. <coughs> hmm. A little dusty. Chili dust. I need a little drink. Okay. Where are we? Oh, I, yeah, I'm just, again, one, as long as I got this out, I will grind up my peanuts. Need another ramekin. Good, a little, still a little chunky, but uh, you don't want to turn this into peanut butter. You don't want this to be dust. Um, so it's just kind of like what you might have on a, a Sunday. It's a lot of peanuts. It's okay. I like a lot of peanuts. All right. I think that's all. The, the prep. So now I'm going to toast my uh, my cloves, my anise, and my cinnamon. Let's see, I'm going to. What do I normally use? It's just a couple of. Let's use. Say four star anise and these cinnamon sticks are smaller than normal. I think I will use hmm, that was good uh, two and how much. I don't know, say a tablespoon of cloves, more or less. All right, so these are going to be on a, on the heat for four or five minutes. I, I wonder, I think I'm going to grind up these Szechuan peppercorns too. Uh, let's do
I don't know. Two tablespoons. Mainly just because I, I don't want to bite into a whole peppercorn. Okay, that looks pretty good. Another ramekin. Stir these up a little bit. Just toasting these so the color will change a little bit. The cinnamon and the star anise, I'm just going to throw in the jar. Uh, but the cloves, I'm going to grind up a little bit just because I don't like whole cloves. Let's, while that's cooking, let's go ahead and get the, uh, the jar started here. Just going to put my chili flakes in and my mushrooms. And let's see what's next. I'll put my peanuts in there. Try not to spill. Give this a little stir. Mmm, smells good. As to why I'm toasting these, I have no idea. <laughs> it's just what they do. Uh, maybe I'm releasing the oils. I don't know. I'll put in my Szechuan peppercorns. And what else? Probably... Uh, let's see. Oh, I was supposed to toast those peppercorns. Oh, well, it'll be fine. <laughs> Actually, um, if the point is to release the oils, I think maybe grinding them up might have very similar benefits. So I'm not worried. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, I'm going to add my MSG. How much do I need here? Not a whole lot. Uh, it's a tablespoon, I guess. And... Push your salt. About a tablespoon. And what same I'm just basically putting the same amount of stuff. Here's some white pepper. So everything is just really, really roughly measured. It's 
This seems like the kind of thing where you just can't make a mistake. Okay, I think these are fine. Take it off the heat before they scorch. I will go ahead and throw the cinnamon and the star anise in here. And then I will put the cloves in here. You know, I don't think I was supposed to toast the cloves. <laughs> Like I said, it will be fine. Not worried. But I will grind them up. Maybe a little more. That looks good. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and add the black vinegar. I think this is just for a preservative and it's an optional ingredient, but I leave this out on the counter. So I think it's a good idea. And soy sauce, of course, just about, like I said, almost all of these are optional ingredients. And this finely ground chili powder, I'm just gonna add the whole bag. Like I said, I don't, I don't know anything about this stuff, but sure it'll be fine. Let's see, oh yeah, and the toasted sesame seeds. I will add uh, about a half cup, or let's do a third cup since that's what I'm craving. Let's see, is that everything? Uh, did I do the white pepper? I think so. MSG, black vinegar, soy sauce, shiitake, peanuts. Uh, wine, clove, cinnamon, anise, spring onions. I don't, let's see, I don't, when do I put those in? Okay. Uh, uh, Okay, yep. I first I'm gonna give that a quick stir. Probably should have stirred it before I put the vinegar and soy sauce in, but it won't matter. And then I will add the green onion. 
It's getting, uh, these chilies are getting to my nose. All right, it is time to start the oil. And the first thing I am going to do is add the shallots and chilies, or in my case, the habaneros. The oil is still cool at the moment. And I'm going to get this ready. Now the idea is to bring the temperature of the oil up to 325 degrees, I think. Yes. Now we're, we're already infusing the oil with the shallots and the habaneros, but the main objective is to uh, fry the fresh ingredients. And right now it's only 81 degrees, so obviously we've got some time to uh, for that to uh, Temperatures to rise. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. So you no longer need it. And <laughs> when it, it, it will taste great immediately when it's done, but it will taste even better tomorrow. Um, I, won't, I won't say that it'll taste better every day you'll wait. It never tastes worse, <laughs> but after a while, I just think it just tastes the same which is awesome, tastes fantastic. Anything that you would, I, I do, uh, I, I like to do a lot of Chinese cooking and like uh, Mongolian beef or Kung Pao chicken or Korean beef or um, okay, it's at, a, at 111 degrees, so it's creeping up. Um, so it's good on all that stuff. But the other day I used this. Uh, to pop popcorn. Oh, was that good. That was a fantastic idea. <laughs> of course, it uses a lot of oil, so. Uh, but I wouldn't call it a waste it all went to a good cause. Let's see how the oil's doing. Still a little, I'm stirring it with the thermometer, 
131 degrees. I'm just putting some of these things away while we wait. Save me cleanup time later. It's not really that messy. I mean, yeah, you, well, I don't normally use a lot of of the ramekins when I'm doing this, but I thought for the sake of the video, I would. Um, but it does use a fair amount of dishes. That's why we have dishwashers. Anything else that needs to go in there? Yes. The other night I made some Korean chicken wings that were very tasty. I use this, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it. So, well, I know how to pronounce fermented red pepper paste. <laughs> I don't know what the, the real name is. And later on today, I think I'm going to make some, uh, well, maybe tomorrow. I don't know. I'm going to make some uh, bone broth from the turkey carcass. And I've, I've been accumulating various parts over the past year. I've got them all frozen in the freezer. And we are going to make a giant batch of stock or broth rather and then I will seal it up in bags and put it in the freezer and we'll be well stocked with broth As you can see here, nothing that I'm doing is complicated. It does take some time. A hundred and eighty degrees. You might turn up the heat a little bit. Just a little. I don't need it to come to temperature super fast, but I do want it to get there. Tonight for dinner, I'm planning to make that uh, YouTube recipe the, for Marry Me Steak. I made it once before and everybody liked it and my wife requested it, so that's what I'm doing. I didn't get another proposal though. That's okay. I already won. This is going to be so great. I, I've been without chili oil for probably a week or so, and I have missed it. <laughs> I've missed it so much. So the oil is boiling. And maybe it's the water coming off of the fresh ingredients. Uh, the oil is at 210 degrees. I'm glad I didn't add any more oil. It's about as high as I want it with all the ingredients in here. Two hundred and fifteen degrees.
Can you? I don't know what your tolerance level is for spice, but you might think, well, aren't the habaneros going to make this too spicy? No. Uh, when you cook the habaneros, they, they get milder. Plus all this stuff is distributed. And honestly, this thing is so loaded with powdered chili. The habaneros are the least of your worries. If you're worried, I'm excited. Two hundred and fifteen degrees. I turn up the heat a little bit more. Everything is super bubbly. It's not, the, the fresh ingredients are not browning yet. They will. Two hundred and eighteen. I bet she just stopped watching the pot. Probably not the most exciting part of the video. There's nothing left to do except boil the stuff. Uh, so what the idea is, if in case I didn't make it clear, I'm going to boil all the fresh, well, these the, the habaneros and the shallots. I'm, I'm deep frying right now in the oil. It's infusing their flavors into the oil. They're cooking at about the same rate. And then I'm going to pour it off into that uh, mesh a sieve. And of course the oil is going to go into the pan. I'm going to pull out the sieve and uh, I should get a plate for that. After the, the fresh ingredients cool down, I will put them in here. And I'm going to put the new pan of oil back on the burner. And then I'm going to cook the, the garlic and the ginger together. And then I'm going to do the same thing where I, I will uh, strain off the garlic and the ginger, let it cool down, put it in here. Bring this back up to temperature and then pour the oil into the jar and let all the stuff infuse. Well, it's still at 220. I'm going to bring the, the heat up a little more. I don't actually recall how long this step took. But it seems like the whole process start to finish takes about an hour. Two twenty two, it's creeping up. Two twenty eight. Maybe I'll make some ramen for lunch. Get a little sneak preview. But it, like I said, it's going to be fantastic tomorrow. Uh, 
Oh, I think it's starting to, I think I see it starting to toast. Uh, another video that I did today was a review of the, uh, what was the name of the company? Vincasa bread box. And I never gave it owning a bread box much thought because it just seemed like a ridiculous notion <laughs> to, uh, why would you put your bread in a box? Guess you have to put it somewhere, but now it turns out there's technology behind that. Um, the idea is to let the bread breathe, but not dry out. And the engineering behind the bread box means that there are vents or vent holes in the box so it it does it maintains a somewhat humid environment that keeps your bread soft but not a sealed environment that would make it you know spend all that time developing a beautiful crust on your sourdough you don't want it to just turn to mush as the natural uh, moisture in the bread escapes. So yeah, I, I really like it. it. I made bread uh, almost a week ago, six days ago, and the bread in there is still soft. If I had that same bread sitting out on the counter, it'd, it'd be a, a brick. Two hundred and thirty six minutes. I think I'm going to just turn the in this oven or this stove. They have uh, you can select. <laughs> Thank you, Amazon. Um, you can select the uh, which how many rings of your burners you want to light. So I maxed the inner ring and turned off the outer ring. It's just my hands getting too hot holding this thing. All right. I don't know if I really need this to be maxed though, so we'll see. It's at 246 degrees. Shallots still are not browned. I suppose by frying them, it's also releasing the liquid within them. Maybe that's really what the bubbles are. 255, 57. It's getting there. Do I need three, 325, I think? It's getting there. 261. If you care to comment on this video, let me know what you would add or remove to the oil. Or better yet, make it yourself and let me know how it went. The dog has entered the kitchen. It's being pretty good. You're being a good dog. All right, it's definitely starting to brown now. 
I might take it off before it hits 325 if it starts to look too toasty. But the I'm seeing brown on my shallots. And the habaneros are definitely shrinking. Two hundred and ninety degrees, so we're almost at three twenty five already. Mm. I think the oil is changing color. Which is just fine. We're almost at the point where I want to turn these off. Three hundred degrees. So I did not want the shallots to burn. Yeah, I think I'm going to take them off. Turn the heat down a little bit. All right, wish me luck. I don't want to make a mess. The shallots are nicely toasted. Set this over here, and I'm going to get a plate to put the the toasted shallots and habaneros on. And then I will put the oil back on the burner. Let's give it a quick measure. Well, the the change the color didn't really change, so. That's fine. So we're almost at 300 degrees now. I might get the temperature back up. And let's give these a little taste. Very good. Wouldn't want them any toastier though. Okay, I bring this back up to three hundred degrees. In the meantime, I'll put this in the jar. And I'll try a toasted habanero. Probably could have toasted these less, actually. But it will be fine. Yeah, the jar is really filling up with stuff. And that's what we want. All right, we're back up at temperature. And I'm going to add the garlic and the ginger. Uh, maybe I'll use a spoon and not just dump it in.
Garlic is in. And the idea is to just barely get the garlic toasted and we're almost there. That's why we cook these separately from the other things because that took forever and this is so fast. So I'm going to put the sieve over the pot and get ready. Yep, this is ready. We're almost done. I'm just going to bring the oil up to 375 degrees, bring the heat back up. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to put these garlic chips, garlic and ginger chips into the jar. It's going to be fantastic. Oh, I found a little garlic skin, which had the garlic attached to it. I didn't just eat the skin. <laughs> mm. Kitchen smells awesome. All right, um, I think I'm going to use a funnel. I don't trust my own skills here. Ooh, got a bit of ginger in that bite. Mm -mm. Mm. This is going to be so good. All right, we're at uh, 320 degrees. We need to bring this to 375. A lot of the stuff I've been reviewing lately has been CD players and MP3 players. I haven't even done videos for a lot of them yet. Just, there is a lot to do. 340 degrees. Three forty four, three forty five. I think I got all these uh, temperatures from that dude can cook. I didn't come up with this. Three fifty seven. Getting there. Uh oh, looks like the dog might be ready to go out. I just took her out before I started, so she 
we shouldn't be de desperate. 370. Oh, maybe he just wanted to bark at the neighbors. Seventy one, seventy two, almost there. Three, four, five. All right, here we go. Hopefully, without making a mess. Oh my. <laughs> All right, so some mess. Stay away, dog. And then count. Nope, nope, get away. I didn't count on the bubbles to cause a problem. I don't, I think it's the first time I've used the funnel. Well, lesson learned. Let's see all the green onions are cooking now in the hot oil. Of course, I've never made this and not had a mess of some kind. So every, it's, it's a, it's a process. Oh, you probably don't want to lick the oil. <laughs> Talking to the dog here. Uh, could be spicy. Probably spicy. Don't lick the oil. You stay there. Stay there. I'm watching you. Nope. <laughs> it's not a good listener. But, uh, so that's chili oil. After this cools down, I will put the lid back on. And uh, I don't know if I need to stir this or not. I don't, I don't. Well, yeah, it says to stir it. So I will stir it. It's just sizzling in there. I will stir it with my giant spoon. Oh, don't eat the paper <laughs> towels. This dog loves to eat paper products. All right, so I will stir with my giant spoon. Ooh, it's hot. I wonder if I should have had this on a it or something. Probably. No, it's over here. Lots of good chunks in this. <laughs> Didn't expect you to. Oh boy, that looks good. All right. All right, now I'll just let this cool down, put the lid on, and 
that is all there is to it. So that's that's chili oil. I hope you enjoyed watching this extremely long video. And uh, if not, I hope you at least saw the end result because it's going to be fantastic. Like I said, let me know if you actually try this because it's not difficult. It just takes a little bit of time and uh, a little bit of cleanup. So thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.